Ah, the solar system, the final frontier. So long as you don't count everything beyond the Kuiper Belt, like Alpha Centauri, Bernard Star, Sirius, the other local star systems, the rest of the Orion Spur, the Sagittarius Spiral Arm, the entire rest of the Milky Way galaxy, all its satellite galaxies, the local group of galaxies, the entire galactic supercluster, all the other nearby galactic superclusters, the entire observable universe, the rest of physical reality that lies beyond our time horizon, and the unknowable cosmic metaphysics that somehow force reality to exist in spite of how it seems like it would have been easier for nothing to exist in the first place. But yeah, other than that, the solar system is the final frontier. It's basically a collection of misshapen spheres of various shapes and textures like a catalogue of 1930s breast implants. Anyway, if you're a world leader thinking of setting up camp on one of these cosmic vacation spots in the near future, you'll need to know which ones are worth the effort and which ones should be left alone like your Austrian uncle's opinion on immigration. So today I'm here to rank every major celestial body in the solar system based on which is the best for us to be thrusting flagpoles into in the near future. This might be of interest if you have any imminent desires to be a space emperor. We have the greatest, biggest, most beautiful Titan war machines. China doesn't have any. The Mechanicus doesn't have any. Any at all. I walked in, I said, well, they don't have any Titan class war machines. Okay, thank you, God Emperor. I'm not really sure what that had to do with what I was saying, but here we go. The sun. First question, why would you colonize it? Uh, the answer to that question is you wouldn't because you can't. It's literally a ball of plasma. What the fuck is wrong with you? F tier. Next up we've got Mercury, there's endless solar power, there's the thrill of frying like an egg if you stand outside for too long, unless it's night time in which case you have precisely the opposite problem. Your tan lines are gonna be aggressive as shit here, it's probably the only place in the solar system you could make a religion out of sunscreen, at least it's basically a ball of iron so we can disassemble it into a Dyson sphere in like a thousand years time, but for now that's a hard pass thanks, C tier. <laughs> Sweet Christ almighty, do things get a lot worse in other places. Speaking of which, Venus, why would you colonize it? I guess for the thrill of dying in the solar system's worst terrestrial location. The clouds are made of acid and the surface will crush you like realizing how much time has passed since you did anything noteworthy with your life. Venus is only good if you have a kink for being dissolved, set on fire, asphyxiated and crushed to death simultaneously. It narrowly avoids F tier by technically having an upper atmosphere in which you could theoretically live if you somehow managed to transport an entire self-sufficient blimp colony there. Good luck with that, and good luck getting back to Earth afterwards. D tier. Earth. Alright, do I need to say it? We're holding like 99.9% .9 of all the cool shit in the universe here. Danger noodles, coconut doggos, regular doggos. The only thing we're missing is limitless energy via nuclear fusion and Dyson Sphere technology. Speaking of which, Emperor, you got any plans for that? Frankly, the Mechanicus aren't paying enough. They want to stay here, they gotta pay. If they don't pay, I'd encourage the forces of Kiss to do whatever the hell they want to them. Okay, that didn't answer my question either, but uh, thanks for that. Just uh, don't, don't make eye contact. The Earth is an S tier, f***ing idiot. Moving on. Uh, moving on. The moon, what's the argument for colonizing it? Um, it's close to Earth. That's about it, really. Oh, there's some water ice at the poles. And there's helium-3 across the surface, so, you know, if we manage to do nuclear fusion and we need some fuel for it, we could go there and collect it. It's a convenient three-day trip away. You can see the Earth in the sky, obviously. It's a bit pathetic now, I think about it. Setting up a colony there is a bit like divorcing your wife specifically so you can move to the house across the street and fog up the living room window by staring at her all day. There's no atmosphere, there's no weather. I guess micrometeorites are gonna be a bit but where isn't that the case in terms of places with no fucking atmosphere? You might want to bury yourself, that'll also prevent the sun from microwaving you. Anyway, the moon is a perfect place if you enjoy taking showers at 10,000 psi to blast off all the sharp glass-like dust particles. Shower time! <laughs> I'll give it an A. I think it's got to have an A given it's so close to us. The only way something that close isn't getting an A is if it's a celestial body made entirely of spiders and dead babies. Mars. Why would we colonize it? Well, it's fairly close by, it's got some decent gravity. You probably won't turn into a human popsicle within five minutes so long as you don't walk outside naked like a gormless dipshit. Mars is like the celestial equivalent of a shit apartment that's kind of livable if you squint at it and lie to yourself. Also, Elon Musk has already picked out the curtains, so you might want to claim your plot of desolate real estate now while you can. It's got to be an A tier, man. Mars is a little overrated, but yeah, it's an A. Next up, we've got all the random bullshit asteroids and small moons that are basically just asteroids, including Phobos and Deimos and all the other ones. Yeah, I'm grouping all of them. Fucking deal with it. I know I said in the last episode that we should go to asteroids, but I had more of a business trip situation in mind. Like, let me remind you, you, this is imagining where the best place is to colonize immediately. I think if we could peer forward 10,000 years, I think most of our descendants will live in space habitats rather than planets. And naturally, those space habitats will be constructed on or near or around or from asteroids. But colonizing an asteroid as your first permanent colony is just weird. It's like taking your first driving lesson in an 
F1 car, there's probably a correct order to do things in. You don't buy a gourmet sandwich, take it apart and shove the individual ingredients up your ass. I don't know, maybe I could be moved on this, but for now it's a, a C tier. Colonizing the asteroids, that is, not butt-chugging a sandwich. Next up is Ceres, and anyone who thought Jupiter was next can leap crotch first into an alligator pit. Don't you dare diss my boy Ceres, he's, he's a nice little guy. He's a friendly little guy, he's a nice little fellow, he's a nice little guy. This is a dwarf planet in the asteroid belt, it's about 40% the mass of the entire asteroid belt. It's just in series. It still has very low gravity though, so it's easy to move stuff around, but you aren't going to accidentally drift off into space unless you have the capability to jump at over a thousand miles an hour, so that's still nice. It's near other asteroids, which is cool, so you can collect minerals and stuff from them if you need to, and it also has this little wet spot on its pants, which is actually water, which is nice to have too. Like many of the basically airless worlds, it has a very, very tenuous atmosphere in reality, which in this case is composed of water, so it's a cool place if you want to breathe and not breathe and drown all at the same time. Ceres is basically the asteroid belt but rolled into one big thing and just put on easy mode. So it gets a B tier. It's a cool place to start mining, slightly weird place to start colonizing straight away. And then Vesta, Pallas, Hygieia and all the other misshapen bum f planetoids can go suck a bag of dicks in C tier with the rest of them. Next up is the gas giants and what would possess you to try and colonize a gas giant? Any of the gas giants are all the worst place to try. Fair enough, they're probably going to be great repositories of gas to collect and use in fusion reactors or whatever once we have the ability to do that in a few hundred or thousand years, but for now, what the sh** are you even thinking? What are you even picturing in your mind? Is it a, a, is it a goddamn hot air balloon? It's mostly made of hydrogen, which is the lightest atom, so enjoy figuring out how to float in it. I'm not saying it's impossible, I'm just saying good luck with that, and with the several hundred miles per hour winds and storms bigger than the earth which have lasted longer than we have been looking at the planet and even if everything goes great and your floating colony works perfectly enjoy being continuously haunted by the thought of something fucking up and you plummeting into a bottomless expanse of clouds for hours on end before eventually being crushed into atoms and scattered into an ocean of metallic hydrogen f tier don't the gas giants do have some cool moons though first up let's do jupiter's uh, ganymede why colonize it well it's the largest moon in the solar system it absolutely raw dog Jupiter's radiation belts by having its own magnetic field, so it might be kind of safe there, provided you can get on and off of it pretty quickly. As the solar system's largest moon, it's the perfect colonization target if you desperately need to compensate for something. Europa, why colonize it? Well, it's got a giant water ocean beneath the ice, and potential for alien life, maybe, probably not, but maybe, you never know. So it's great if you're into neighbors that look like tiny, squishy nightmares. I hope you brought a shovel because the ice is 20 kilometers deep and you have two months to get there before Jupiter's radiation belt liquefies your organs. Europa's perfect if your dream involves penguin cosplay and playing Subnautica in real life. Also, bring a heat lamp and a therapist because you'll need both after realizing your new backyard is basically the thing waiting to happen. Callisto, why would you colonize it? Well, it's another one of these with a potential subsurface ocean and it's far enough from Jupiter to not get caught in its radiation shitstorm in the first place. While interesting enough to make this list, it's also kind of boring in the grand scheme of things. Going to Callisto now is like a person in 5000 BC moving to where Sheffield will one day be. Honestly, I'd give all of these a B tier, other than Io. Speaking of Io, Mum found the piss moon. It's a ball of sulfur and volcanic eruptions. Probably smells like ass too. Look at it. It's shitted right to fuck. It's been manhandled so hard by Jupiter that it's basically pissed itself on a planetary scale. Since it's so close to Jupiter, it's great if you want to live near the solar system's most imposing and oddly terrifying nightlight that's sure to give you some sort of cosmic horror mental breakdown while it looms over you constantly. D tier, that's me being very generous. Next we'll do Saturn's moons. Enceladus, why would you colonize this one? Well, it's got water geysers, an underground ocean, potential alien microbes. Enceladus is basically Europa's little brother. It's trying its best, but people kind of forget about it. But I like it because it has some cool tiger stripes near the South Pole that kind of looks like a rip-off Mike Tyson face tattoo. It's got water and ice below the ground, on the ground, above the ground. It's being shot into space. There's just water and ice everywhere. Come here if you'd love to be in a water park in Antarctica. Okay, this place gets a B. Titan. Why would you colonize it? Well, it's got a thick atmosphere. It's got lakes of liquid methane. It's got all the sci-fi potential you could ever want. Titan's kind of like Earth if Earth had a drinking problem and traded all of its oceans for vodka. Sure, it rains methane, but at least you'll never run out of barbecue fuel. Hey, you know what? F*** you. A 
tier. Me and the boys are going methane dipping at 3 a.m. All the other outer solar system moons can f off. C tier, all of you, get the f out of my office. All right, the biggest giga chads amongst you will have realized I haven't touched the Kuiper belt objects. And I'm throwing those all in C tier too, but I might as well give them a rundown real quick. Uh, Pluto, why colonize it? Nostalgia for when Pluto was still considered a planet, I guess. I don't get why you'd go this far to colonize a frozen wasteland when Canada is right there. Eris, why would you colonize it? Uh, it's even farther, colder, high gravity and bright surface make it semi-interesting, I guess. Haumea, all right, this one's actually pretty sick. It's got this weird egg-shaped body due to its rapid rotation, and I, I know it looks like I squanched this image down, but no, it actually looks like that in real life. And it's got a ring system and a couple of moons, which is pretty sick. It's perfect if you want to live on a cosmic fidget spinner. Make make. This one's worth visiting just to tell your friends and have them insist that you're making up the reality of there being a real planet in this solar system called Make Make that they've never heard of before. I'm not even checking if that's how you say it. Screw it. If I'm f***ing it up, the video will be funnier. Sedna. Why colonize it? Because it's one of the most distant objects in the solar system, so it's perfect if you hate everyone and everything. My god, there's even more. Qu Quayoa? Orcus? There's one called Gong Gong? One of them has the least pronounceable name I've ever seen in my life? F*** it, we're done here. Emperor, any final words? I spoke with Horace earlier. What a great leader. I phoned him just last week. He was in Venezuela. We talked about great things. Not that you'd know that if you listen to the Tao fake news. Yeah, okay. Well, on that note, I'm gonna wrap things up. That's the solar system ranked from potentially almost immediate death to definitely immediate death. And while it's mostly the latter, it's good to know that even in the deep beyond, we can still find plenty of places to die horribly while attempting to erect a Wendy's. Anyway, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe if you want to. I'll catch you in the next one. Over and out.